Good morning, everyone. Happy Devotion Tuesday. Glad we can be together this morning. Looking forward to completing the lesson we started last week. It was a short time together, so let's jump right in. Last week we had talked about the benefits of Pentecost. And I'm going to do a quick recap on that, and then I want to go into the idea that we said we would follow up on this week, and and that was the ability to pray in the Spirit, the ability to pray in the Spirit. What does that mean? What does that look like? And so I want to talk about, uh, talk about that. So last week we had read from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, and this talks about the day of Pentecost and the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, both events brand new, very first time. Now, Pentecost, of course, was a feast we had been doing for 1,500 years. Um, so that's not new. Uh, but what took place on this day of Pentecost, that was totally new. And the outpouring of the Holy Spirit was a um, huge event. Um, so many starts on, on the day of Pentecost. But let's just get the background for the recap. So when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house. And they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Then the people who had been listening to all of that new sound made the statement that they're drunk. And Peter stands up and, and he's going to explain from the prophet Joel this event that is now taking place. Uh, Acts chapter 2, verses 14 through 21. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd, fellow Jews, and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they will prophesy. And I will show you wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and billars of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood after the coming of that great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So, here is Peter talking about this great Pentecost event and quoting the prophet Joel, obscure book in the Old Testament, which is coming very much alive for us in the New Testament during this significant day of Pentecost, which has begun with the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Pentecost, as we said the last time, was a huge event for Israel. It was one of seven Jewish feasts, Passover, uh, Unleavened Bread, and First Fruits, Feast of Weeks, or Pentecost, Feast of Trumpets, the Feast of um, Atonement, and then the Feast, Feast of Boots, giving us seven of these important feasts. Pentecost was a harvest feast for the next four months. They would be involved in their barley and wheat harvest. But what we discover from this huge, great first-time event is that Pentecost was more than just the Pentecost that had been celebrated for the last 1,500 years. This feast had a divine timetable. Um, the Jews tell all the people that they're drunk. Peter reminds them of what Joel has prophesied. 
Um, and so the question we asked last week is, what did Pentecost open up to us that we didn't have before? So um, if you missed that lesson last week, please go back to that where we talk a little bit longer uh, about those things. I'm going to go through those quickly now because we're, what we want to get to is this idea of praying in the Spirit. When the Holy Ghost comes into our lives, it gives us another powerful ability that was open to us for the very, very first time. And I'm going to list for you a list of firsts that Pentecost opened up for us. So what did Pentecost open up for us? Well, Pentecost brought to us the wonderful baptism outpouring of the Holy Spirit that was now available to to all man, to to humanity. Um, that wasn't available um, when Jesus was here. Um, Jesus met Nicodemus in John chapter 3, and he said, you must be born again of the Spirit and of the water. Uh, but John, or, or um, Nicodemus, only could take advantage of one of those. He could only take advantage of the water because the Spirit wasn't available yet. But it is available at Pentecost, and it's been available um, from Pentecost um, to today. So it's still available, this wonderful outpouring of the Holy Ghost, this personal infilling of the Holy Ghost, this having Jesus on your inside is a wonderful gift and totally available to uh, whoever wants it um, today. All right, so Pentecost brought with us the outpouring of the host, uh, Holy Ghost. Uh, Pentecost was the beginning of the church. Church is talked about in Matthew chapter 16, but the church becomes the church. It begins in Acts chapter 2. Peter also reminded us to mark this as the beginning of the last days, the beginning of the last days. We talked about the ramifications of that um, the last time. Uh, another first, though, is the beginning of full New Testament salvation. It was prescribed and talked about when Jesus was here on the earth, but it's available for the very first time in the book of Acts after Jesus uh, leaves and returns to heaven. Peter says in Acts 2.38, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promises to you and to your children and to your children's children and all to are far off, even as many as the Lord our God will call. This prescribed statement now to the Jews um, is seen throughout the book of Acts, and, and it is now a part of the New Testament birth Jesus had talked about in the New Testament, as we said to Nicodemus in John chapter 3, 5. All right, Pentecost is, is about harvest, and in this case, it was more than crops. This was about delivering people. This was about people coming to God in a personal relationship with him in a way that was not available before. It was now the task of the church to start winning people to Jesus Christ. We talked about what the Holy Ghost helps us to do. It gives us power to witness, power to witness, power to share a story about how we discovered Jesus and how Jesus brought us to him and, and how he changed us in marvelous ways. Acts 1a, but, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. The seventh thing, it gave us access to the gifts of the Spirit, which God uses to bless and speak to the church. It wasn't available before. Um, there's a devotional tongue available um, to members in the church. 1 Corinthians 14, 1 through 5 talks about that. The ability to uh, pray in the power of the Spirit. We're going to talk about that a little bit more uh, momentarily. And then lastly, uh, it gives us rapture power, right? The ability to lift off of this earth when Jesus comes back. 
to take his church to be home with him. That's talked about in 1 Thessalonians um, chapter 4, verses 15 through 18. Uh, so please go back and read that. Very, very uh, powerful scripture. So that's our recap. That's our recap. And, and today now we want to talk about this, what it means to have the power to pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Now we're going to find that in Romans chapter 8, verses 26 and 27. It reads this way, Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we pray for, for as we ought. But the Spirit, capital S, Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now, he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for for the saints according to the will of God. We're going to come back to some of that. So when we received the Holy Ghost, we had all these wonderful benefits open to us at, at Pentecost. Um, but this gives us a powerful access and connection to God that we didn't have before in that God prays through us a perfect prayer according to the will of God. It's not a selfish prayer. It's not advising God on how he should answer prayer. It is God praying through us. Um, because he's in us, and we have this ability then to pray, pray in the Spirit. Now, I want to read some scriptures just to drive this home just a little bit more. When, we, when you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you now have God living in you. Paul says it this way, 2 Corinthians 13, 5, 5. Examine yourself as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Not on you, not about you, not around you. Christ is in you unless, indeed, you are disqualified. Romans 8, 10. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. And then one more, Colossians 1.27. To them God willed to make known what are the riches of of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Praise the Lord. So when you get the baptism of the Holy Ghost, he comes to live inside of you. Now, not only is that marvelous, not only does Pentecost open up all those wonderful things to us, but now that God's living in us, he gives us the ability from time to time to pray in the Spirit to pray in the Spirit. So, I want to share some things with us quickly this morning about God being in us and praying through us. God being in us and, and, and praying through us. So when you get the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and when God prays through us, we have a power we don't own. Let's say that again. Because you have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, when God prays through us, you have a, a, a power that we don't own. Right? That, that Spirit of God that comes to us is a spirit that's from another world. You and I are born with a spirit, human spirit. The Bible tells us we're, we're body, um, soul, and spirit. Um, but when you get the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you get a spirit that's literally from another world. How cool is that? Um, the Bible tells us if we lack wisdom to, to ask for it, but when you get the baptism of the Holy Ghost and you're actually praying in the Spirit, you're going you're gonna to pray a perfect prayer. Um, during that time, you, you have the wisdom that we normally lack. The Bible says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weakness. For we do not know what we should pray, but God gives us the wisdom, right, to know that and to pray the perfect prayer. We, 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 we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession 
for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what is the mind of Christ, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So powerful. All right. Fourth thing, we pray with a mercy we can't imagine. We pray with a mercy that can that, that we can't imagine. But when you're praying that intercessory prayer and, and that Holy Ghost is praying through us, um, it's it's miraculous. It's miraculous. And you're not praying selfishly. You're not praying against. You're, you're praying with a mercy that we cannot imagine. Fifthly, we're praying with a connection we, we didn't once possess. Romans 8.35, Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or, or sword? No, there's, there's nothing that can separate us from the love of Christ. Praise the Lord. Sixthly, God's Spirit praying through us prays according to God's perfect will. I love this. It's the perfect prayer, and it prays according to God's will. Sometimes we ask, well, how long do I need to pray? Well, one of the purposes of prayer is that your will submits to the Lord's will. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That submitting of our will, it is perfect when it's being done through the power of the Spirit. Because he who searches the heart knows what is the mind of the Spirit. He makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. That prayer that's prayed in the Spirit is always going to be answered, and it is always perfect, and it is always right. And the submission of wills is a given. Because... Um, that prayer is being prayed through us by the God of heaven. God's Spirit praying through us according to God's perfect will, Romans 8, 27. All right, so, summing this up, Pentecost opened up to us so many wonderful things. And it set some markers that are also important for us to understand and important to us to know. Pentecost opened up, right, the, the beginning, that, that first marker. It's the beginning of the last days. It's the beginning of the church. It's the beginning of the soul harvest where we invite people to serve Jesus Christ. We invite them to be in relationship with him. It's the beginning of people for the very first time. Whosoever will. It's the beginning of people being filled with the power to witness. It's the first time that people begin to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of God gives them utterance. It's the beginning of God's plan for the church to save all people, both Jew and Gentile. And it's the first time we have access to God to pray in the Spirit. Wow. Think about that. You and I have access to God in a way that we never had access to Him. And so, it's another reason to pray. Because as we pray, God can use that to turn into this prayer of the Spirit, this perfect prayer, to accomplish His perfect will for you and me um, in their lives. It's where God intercesses through us to pray in the perfect prayer according to the perfect will. It's, it's incredible. I'll, I'll, I'll never forget the story of a saint telling uh, Brother Bernard, I don't, I don't know what was going on. You know, it was about two or three o'clock in the morning. I, I was woken up and I felt that I needed to pray urgently. Um, and, and I remember that at that time of grabbing my bed and holding onto it tight, tight, tightly and, and interceding and, and praying in the spirit. And, and, uh, yeah, I just, I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and, um, and 
when Brother Bernard was telling told that story, he he said uh, what had happened during that day was, um, I believe it was a, a rainstorm, and they were going up a hill, and uh, they lost control of, of the car. And the car started to go back down the hill, um, and they couldn't, they couldn't stop it. And then just at about that same time that God touched that soul to start praying, um, that car got caught on a tree trunk and held them so that they were safely able to, how to, to get out of the car. That, that perfect prayer can be prayed at the perfect time and give us the perfect outcome. There's so many of those types and kinds of story. May we have a lot more of those times in our prayer lives in 2021. We certainly need to be praying God's perfect prayer, and we certainly need to to spend more time in in the Spirit. What a God, and and what a benefit that Pentecost uh, gives us access to. Well, let's pray. And I pray that if if you don't have this Holy Spirit that we've been talking about, if you, if you've never um, had the experience of speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God gives you utterance, um, I want you to know that's available to you this morning. I want you to know that you read your Bible, Acts chapter 2, uh, Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 19. Uh, it's readily available to whoever, whoever will ask for it. It's very simple. We just need to repent of our sins. It just simply means, God, I'm sorry. I haven't always lived the way I should live. Um, it means being baptized in Jesus' name. You can call New Life Church, set up an appointment. We would love to be able to do that. Um, ask for uh, Brother Shaw. Uh, and then they'll pray with you to to get the baptism of, of the Holy Spirit. Now, there doesn't have to be a certain order, so you could ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit today. And wouldn't it be marvelous if... That spirit, which is from another world called heaven, came down to earth and filled your lovely uh, body and soul and human spirit with, with his spirit to help you live for him. Oh, that would be so wonderful. You have the power to witness. For those of, those of us who have the Holy Spirit, uh, Holy Spirit, he didn't give us the spirit of God for us just to speak in tongues. right? He, he gave it to us that we might witness to others. And in the world we're living in, the only hope is, is God. The government didn't help Texas this week, wasn't able to do it. Um, but God saw us through and saw many through. So let's just pray this morning. Father, we love you. We need you. We appreciate you. We thank you for the day of Pentecost 2,000 years ago. And what that opened up and presented is still available to us today. I pray for the hurting Lord that you would... Give them peace. I pray for those who had some destruction during this week of, of weather, that you would pour out your spirit on them, send them help, um, send them what they need. Let your peace which passes all understanding touch everyone who is hearing me this morning. Lord, may they try you, may they seek you, may they reach up to you, and may they discover you ask you, Lord, to touch them. Fill someone with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, we pray. This week, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you so much for being uh, with us this morning. Uh, I hope and I pray that you'll leave a, a comment. And I hope and I pray that you'll touch God's uh, hand today. And I hope and pray that you'll reach out and touch somebody else today. Let your light shine. Be salt. Be light. And share the Holy Ghost with someone today. God bless you all.